What it is, my Tenno Peace and Grease here, and I think we should talk a little bit about our latest update, the Heart of Deimos. Now, I'm going to break this video into two parts. We're going to talk about the good qualities of this update, and then we'll transition into the, well, not so good qualities of this update. Uh, keep in mind, uh, there's a couple things. First of which, that DE has been consistently releasing hotfixes. I think we're up to hotfix 4, and they are now working on an interim update for this update. Uh, so a lot of these things may change. Uh, some may not. Some may get better. Some may get worse. So we're going to have to kind of wait and see where it goes from there. Um, the other thing is that this video is going to be kind of lengthy. I apologize, but there is a lot to cover as far as the goods and the, the not-so-goods with this update. The first thing I want to talk about is all of the teams that did a fantastic job on this update. The first one is going to be the art team. I think they nailed it. From a distance, overlooking the valley, I tell you what, the Cambian Drift almost kind of has a beauty to it. And then you get close up and you realize just how disgusting it truly is. Um, but that's the infested. They are disgusting. I mean, consider you're fishing on a river of pus. Yeah, it doesn't get much grosser than that. Uh, but, again, that's what the infested are. They're nasty. Uh, I do like the contrast they have going between these pristine Oricon vaults and just surrounded by this infestation. I really like that contrast. Another team that needs to be commended is the musical team. I think the soundtrack is for this update is like AAA quality. It is fantastic. It's a really they did a bang up job on this on this uh, this musical score. Now, don't get me wrong. As far as I'm concerned, the best quest and the best musical score that has ever been made for Warframe is still going to be a toss-up between the War Within and the Second Dream, as far as I'm concerned. But, that being said, I still think that the musical score is very well done. Another team I think that needs to be commended is the, the voice acting team. I think they did a bang-up job. All these characters have unique voices, unique sounds, and their personalities really kind of shine through, I think. So I think they did a bang-up job. Although there was a problem with the dialogue, which we'll get to that here in a minute. In general, this is just a massive update. I mean, we've got new pets. We've got a new Warframe. New quest. We have new weapons. We have Necromech. We have the Helmuth Chrysalis system. And we have a new open world. And more fishing, hunting, mining bounties. Um, there's just a lot in this update to partake in. Depending on what it is you're looking for, there's probably something here for you. And it does seem as if they have improved K-Drive so that you can now shoot from them at this point, which is a much needed update, a much needed, much needed update. Although there are other qualities that are needed, but you take what you can get. Um, initially, I thought that the, I thought that the economy for the standing worked pretty well. Um, however, it's a double-edged sword. So, on the surface, I'm fine with the tokens for standing, although there there is kind of a dark side to that, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, something that actually falls between the good and the not-so-good on this list is the quest. The quest is about average. It's what you'd expect from a Warframe quest. It's not as if there's a lot of substance or a lot of depth to this quest. I mean, we're not talking about Witcher 3, for goodness sake. Don't get me wrong, I would enjoy that. Uh, would, but honestly, I think that the best quests we're probably ever going to get for the Warframe is the Second Dream and the War Within are probably going to be the best quests we ever get. Um, again, I don't want that, but I think that's kind of what DE has kind of settled on, if I had to guess. This this quest in general, the, the Heart of Deimos quest, is about average. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just kind of falls somewhere in the middle. Um, so with that being said, let's talk about the not-so-good quality, shall we? Okay, um, standing. We had the Plains of Eidolon, and we had these factions at zero standing, and we had to get them to max standing. How do we do that? Fishing, hunting, mining, bouncies. Then we got Fortuna. We have all these factions at zero standing, we had to get them to max standing. How do we get them there? Fishing, hunting, mining, bounties. Now we got the Heart of Deimos, we got this faction at zero standing, we had to get it to max standing. How do we get it there? Fishing, hunting, hunting mining, bounties. Yeah. It's getting repetitive at this point. Um, I really would hope that if we have another open world with factions, 
that DE figures out another way to go about this than just kind of the same old, tired, uh, repetitive nature of what we've seen so far with open worlds in regards to gaining standing, obviously. That's something that desperately really needs to change up. It's just, it's getting very tiring at this point doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for every damn open world. Speaking of standing, the, the issue that we have here is DE has learned from the Plains of Eidolon and Fortuna that there are some activities that some players don't want to partake in. Maybe it's fishing, maybe it's hunting, maybe it's mining. Well, with this token standing system on the surface, like I said, seems great. I know that every night I need to run three of the Zaku Systems bounties, and that's enough to mother tokens to max my standing for the night. Every night. I, I, so I've got it down to a science. The problem comes when, it, when you're ready to rank up or you're ready to buy certain things. That's where the problem comes in. Because the tokens essentially force you to do these activities that you may not otherwise actually do. So, for example, fishing. If you're not a fan of fishing, well, too bad. You're probably going to need tokens from the daughter at some point, so get to fishing. Maybe you don't like mining. Too bad. Get to mining because you're going to need those tokens from OTAC at some point. Maybe you don't like hunting. Too bad. You're going to need those tokens from the sun, so get to hunting. So DE has kind of figured out, and unfortunately, it in a way, kind of removes player choice because if you're going to want to get to max standing and you're going to want to get these like new weapons or new pets, for example, you're going to have to do these types of activities, whether you want to or not. And believe you me, I understand. Um, I got kind of burnt out on hunting with the Plains of Eidolon. And then Fortuna came out, and then I was definitely burnt out on hunting because those are the two best ways to gain standing in the Plains of Eidolon and Fortuna. Well, fishing for the Mortis Lungfish was the best way in the Plains of Eidolon, but they fixed that. <laughs> so uh, they have made that mistake again, uh, allowing us to, to gain decent amounts of standing from fishing. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. The other problem with standing is when we look at Grandmother, for example... Uh, her tokens are 10 times everybody else's tokens, with, with the exception of the sun, because his tokens are worth 500 standing each. But her tokens are worth 10 times more because they're worth 1,500 a pop. So I can understand that. Don't have a problem with that. Uh, the issue that I do ha have, however, is when we look at items such as the Sarah Glass Shard, this is just way overpriced as it stands right now. 20 grandmother tokens is kind of have seen really because that's literally like 20,000 standing or excuse me 30,000 standing in grandmother tokens so yeah uh, that, that and don't get me wrong some of these things like we look at this these grandmother tokens for these these capture scenes you're looking at 50 grandmother tokens each um, <laughs> these are all optional though these are all I would call cosmetic capture scenes are cosmetic all of these types of items are cosmetic these are all optional the difference here is that the Sarah Glass Shard is not in any way, shape, or form optional, particularly when you want the new weapons, because there are at least three new weapons that require a Sarah Glass Shard each. That's 60 grandmother tokens. That's like 90,000 standing. So I do definitely think that the tokens can easily be cut in half on the grandmother tokens. So no, yeah, it just has to, that's in my opinion what has to happen. Okay, um, also the problem that I'm having is when we look at a character like Otak, for example, Otak is constantly asking for the same type of mining resources. Uh, specifically, he's asking for uh, Hesephron. For example, here's Hesephron. Uh, here's Hesephron. Um, let's see. Normally, about half of his inventory is bounties with Hesephron. Here's another Hesephron. Um, I just don't get that much. I, I mine all the damn time. And unfortunately, Hesephron just does not drop that often. So one of two things really kind of needs to happen here. And either you need to change the status of Hesephron and Thamica, by the way, to rare or Essentially, you need to get him to ask, get Otak asking for less of it and less often. Because honestly, 
I mean, I'm sitting on like what 2,000 bathalite from mining. Yeah, 21, uh, 2,160 bathalite from mining. So it's not as if I'm not mining. I am. It's just sadly, the Hesephron and the Thamica just does not drop. Are they supposed to be as rare as like Xenarast? I think not. So I, I think that there's probably a tuning issue here where you kind of need to turn the, the tuning knob up a little bit on the way that these drop. Um, another issue that I have is when we look at the father's inventory. Now the issue that I have here with the father's uh, parts requisition is in the same exact way we talked about Otak. He's asking, he's asking for the same thing over and over again. Specifically, he's asking for Foss residue and Vohm residue. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Peace, what's the big deal? It's just on the ground. Just pick it up. You're right. It is laying on the ground. But here's the problem, the big picture. You need this for fishing, right? You need this to build antigen and mutagens. When you want father tokens, you need it for that. And if you run isolated vaults, you can't pick it up off the ground because for that actual isolated vault, you have to pick up the Vohm residue anyway. There's just too much that, are, that is attached to Foss and Vohm residue. Furthermore, a resource booster does not double the amount of Foss or Vohm residue you pick up. Even with the resource booster, even if you had three years of a resource booster, you're still only picking up one Foss residue or one Vohm residue each time. So... What needs to happen here, is, in my opinion, is you need to allow resource boosters to work, uh, to double the drops, the pickups, or he needs to stop asking for them so often, or he needs to stop asking for as much as he is. Preferably all of those, but that's kind of obviously my opinion. Don't go get now, the Sun character, I really don't have a problem with. Uh, just roaming around, mining, fishing, and uh, I, I just gradually hunt at the same time. And I typically find all types of animal tags. So I don't really have a problem with the sun. There's enough variety there that he's not asking for the same thing over and over again as far as what I'm seeing that I don't have. Then we get to the daughter. Her problem is that she's always asking for two amount, two items. She's always asking for dendrite blastomas. And she's always asking for spoilet sacks. That's kind of an issue because, again, I just don't... I fish all the time. I fish during Bohm. I fish during Foss. I fish all the damn time. I just don't get that much dendrite blastoma. And I just don't get that much spoilet sack. I just don't. So, I think, again, either we're not getting enough as intended from when we cut fish. Uh, in which case, we need to tune it, turn up the knob a little bit, so we're actually getting more from for dendrite blastoma and spoilet sacks from the fish, uh, the, the respective fish that we're cutting. Or she needs to ask for this, I, this these resources less often and less of them, in my opinion. The mother character, I don't have any problem with, with her. You know, you do the work, you run the bounties. Like I said, I, I, I'm at level, I'm at MR29 at this point. Not bragging, just making a point here. Uh, I'm in MR29, so I can get 30,250 standing per night with the Andrade. And I know that that's basically running the Zaku Systems Bounty three times in a row, back to back. I can do that solo, I can do it quick, I can do it easy, and that, that caps my standing for the night. Just that easy. So I don't have any problem with the Mother Tokens, don't have any problem with the Sun Tokens. They just, you know, they work as they are. Uh, what else did I mention? Uh, I was going to mention the Necromech not picking up certain drops, but the truth of the matter is that DE's already going to fix that in the interim update. So, uh, same thing for the bugs, di the, the dialogue that's bugged. Um, now, they did release a hotfix for that so that it would stop the characters abruptly stopping the dialogue, but my problems with dialogue went well beyond that. For example... The daughter character repeated the same line over and over again, which is, the only thing they breathe is what they expel. The only thing they breathe is what they expel. The only thing they breathe is what they expel. The father character, I got to talk to that character like one time during the quest, and then after that, no dialogue at all. It just kind of threw me to a waypoint. Um, what else? There was another. There was another issue that I. Oh, the dialogue options. Which kudos to DE for dialogue options. I love me some dialogue options as long as it has a bearing 
on the character within the story, you know, or characters within the story. So that kind of remains to be seen as yet, but still, I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, but back to the topic at hand, and that was that uh, when I selected a dialogue option, the character said like two words, abruptly stopped talking, closed the dialogue box on me, and I couldn't reactivate it. And I would have really liked to have heard the character's input during this quest, and obviously I didn't get to hear it all. I gathered enough, you know, from what I could, you know, uh, hear. I, I gathered enough of the information. Um, but, yeah, obviously I can replay the quest. Um, but that may be something I do at a later date. Um, what else? Skin to lens. Let's talk about skin to lens. I did not hear, it, read anything about this in the interim update. And this is something that still, in my opinion, isn't fixed because it's taking me about 10 isolation vault runs and I'm running isolation bolts one and two, uh, one and sometimes two by myself. Be and, and the reason for that is because, um, unfortunately, because this is, this is still kind of new, uh, the success rate for a group of randoms is about 50-50. 50% of the time, we get the vault open. The other 50% of the time, we don't. For example, I was running uh, isolation bolts with uh, some characters the other day and one dude was like, it's bugged, uh, you know, because I was in another room. And all of a sudden I heard uh, Lloyd say, you, you got your, first, your first attempt was wrong. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What? Wait, who's opening the vault? So I ran down there really quick. And by the time, right as I get down there, he messed it up a second time in a row. And I'm like, dude, we only got one. We only have one attempt left. What are you doing? And so he's like, oh, it's bugged and it's not putting in the right code. And I'm like, okay, fine. Well, I'm here now. I can see the code on the door. Enter the code. He enters the first code correctly. I run over to the second, which happened to be Foss. I run over to the second. And before I can zap it, he zaps the other one on the, uh, on the other side of the room. I'm like, what do you... And he's like, oh, it's bugged. I'm putting it in and right. I'm like, no, you're not. I just saw. But anyway, my point isn't to shame that that guy. My point is that Unfortunately, the success rate is 50-50, and I know that if I go in solo, my success rate is more like 80 to 90. So that's why I do it solo, not for any other reason. Um, but the Skintilens, I'm seeing about 1 in 10 isolated vault runs, I'm getting a Skintilent. 1 in 10. So unfortunately, uh, this still isn't fixed in my opinion. Uh, I personally would like to see these removed from the game and placed into one of the characters inventories until they can get it sorted right not not forever or anything like that just until they can get it sorted is all that i'm asking um something else that i have a problem with is the helmet chrysalis system i think they need to work on the economy because the helmet chrysalis asking for you know an, an insane amount of copper nicks or an insane amount of fresnels which is like railjack the, the bottom line comes down to this. We, those, are, those are the players that have spent you know five years, in my case, six and a half years or seven years playing this game. We have a lot of resources. I only ask that we be allowed to use them and not be penalized in the Helmuth chrysal chrysal Chrysalis system. You know, if I'm sitting on 10 million salvage, let me use it, DE. That's all that I'm asking. I'm not trying to be you know, an a-hole or a dick or anything. I'm just, I'm being real here. I have like 10, 10, over 10 million salvage at this point. Let me use some of it without being penalized by the Helmuth Chrysalis system. So I really think the coding needs to be changed on the Helmuth Chrysalis so that it doesn't downvote because it really does seem as if all of the items you have, all of the resources you have the most of, seem to be downvoted. You know, have a down arrow on them by the Helmuth Chrysalis. And all the items that you don't have a ton of, like Railjack resources, have an upvote. And I just, that just, that just feels really bad, and it just looks really bad as well. So that's definitely something I think should be changed. And I think the last thing I'll talk about is probably... Um, oh, there's one other thing. The Zaku drop rates. The Zaku drop rates actually, uh, um, at first, weren't that bad. The Zaku drop rates, when I ran the Neuroptics bounties, it took me about 5 to 10 bounties to get the Neuroptics. Literally that quick. Uh, likewise, when I ran the chassis, it took me about five to ten runs to get the chassis as well. But when it came to the systems, this took me nearly, you know, up to 40 bounty runs to finally get the systems. Yeah. So I think there's some kind of a glitch or a bug 
because why would the Neuroptics be 5 to 10 bounties and the chassis be 5 to 10 bounties and then the systems be 40 bounties? That's a huge contrast when they're supposed to be both, you know, all three be uncommon. And then, of course, we could talk about the fact that you then need five Skintalents um, and for the, the Zaku systems and you need five Skintalents for the new fan melee weapon, the Quasis, which, if I'm honest, I just bought the damn thing uh, because I got a 75% off coupon and once I got my first five Skintalents, to build the Zaku systems, and I looked at what I was going to have to go through just to get five more, I said, I give up. You win DE, take my money. I guess that's what I'm going to have to do at this point. So I ended up just buying the the, the Quasis, so I didn't have to mess with getting the Skintalents, because it was really kind of, the grind was ridiculous. Um, and then finally, the last thing I haven't heard anybody talk about that is absolutely horrible. And that is... Glassmaker enemies. Now you're probably wondering, peace. Wait a minute. What does Glassmaker enemies have to do yeah. with um, the Heart of Deimos? I'm glad you asked. Let me explain. The problem here, ultimately, is that while you're out on the Cambian Drift, fishing, hunting, and mining, there is a non-stop, steady stream of never-ending Glassmaker enemies, 24/7. And I regularly come back from the Cambrian Drift with 400, 600, 800,000 Nightwave standing because it's a non-stop just stream of Glassmaker enemies. Now, I'm going to say this next part and I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being real. And quite simply, the fact is this. I don't care about Glassmaker. I don't care about the Glassmaker enemies. I don't care about this Nightwave anymore. Once I got to rank 30, I stopped caring about this Nightwave. I damn sure don't care about Glassmaker enemies. I'm on the Cambian Drift because I want to experience the new update. The last thing I want is Glassmaker enemies. I personally would love to have like a little tab in the option, options menu where I could just click off Glassmaker enemies so I don't have to see them, don't have to hear them, don't have to interact with them ever again. That's what I would prefer, but that's not realistic. So, can we at least compromise, DE? Can you at least dial that, take that knob, turn it way the hell down there, and let's say once during FOSS, you get a group of Glassmaker enemies. Once during VOM, you get a group of Glassmaker enemies. Can we at least do that? Because it's taking away from my time and my enjoyment on the new update. I mean, I, I, the only reason I'm at rank 50 almost uh, with Glassmaker right now is just by playing the game. It's not like I'm actively trying. I mean, look at all... I haven't completed any of these challenges. I just... I, I stopped caring about this at rank 30. As I said in my Nightwave review, I think DE did a fantastic job at the main part of the Nightwave. But rank 30 is still the literal dead end of this. And I haven't cared about it since. So it'd be nice if we could, you know, <laughs> pack, pack that knob on down. <laughs> Those are kind of my thoughts and opinions on it, though. As a whole, I think that this is overall a really good update i mean as i already said there's a ton of content here there's a ton to experiment with uh and no matter what you're into whether you're into the pets whether you're into the weapons whether you're into the necromax whether you're into experimenting with the helmet chrysalis system there is just a ton here a ton here and i think overall this was a great update there are just a few things as i mentioned that need a little bit more fit and finish and a little bit more spit and polish. And I know some of this is going to be addressed by the interim update. But some of this I have not even heard talked about or discussed. So, hence why I'm putting this video out there. But those are kind of my thoughts and opinions. Let me know what your guys and gals thoughts are. You, you always come up with some fantastic uh, thoughts and ideas out there. I'd love to hear from you guys and gals. Um, let me know. And until next time, peace out.